Welcome to Don't Quote Me On That. One day we will have an intro, but today is not that day. Hi, this is Eleanor. And this is Kalina. And welcome back to Don't Quote Me On That, where we talk about whatever we want and my grandma listens. <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to have to change our like logo to we talk about whatever we want because I think that's what you say every single time. Well, when we talk about a movie, I say that we're talking about a movie. It's just... A few and far between? It's just we don't really do that. We will see. I did it when I did... Yeah, when I did my last solo episode, I was like, where we kind of talk about movies. And don't worry, guys, I'm hitting the quota for the year. (laughs) This is a movie. I think we've got some some big plans brewing. And by big plans brewing, I I mean, I think we're going to see Barbie. And we'll probably talk about it. We will definitely talk... I, I... I didn't want to talk about it. I just wanted to, like, see the movie and enjoy it. But, like, I've heard so many differing opinions on it. And, like, it's really just two opinions. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just really... I really feel like we need to, you know, contribute our two cents. We really do. Because I think we'll agree. And I also think we'll be more correct than anybody else who has ever spoken about it. Because... Honestly. We are smart and brilliant. And, um... Yeah. That's what happens with us in everything. Exactly. You might be right. We're just more right. Mm-hmm. Um, but today we're talking about a TV show, which is basically a movie. And yeah, especially because we sat it and sat down and watched it all at one time. Exactly. Separately, but at one time. So. And um, it's called "Only Murders in the Building," obviously because of the title. <laughs> And I think with this, Kalina watched it, like, months ago, and then I had a weekend where I had absolutely nothing to do, and I just felt the need to watch something new, because, like, that, I don't know about you, but I, like, so rarely feel the need to watch something new, that if inspiration just strikes to watch something new, I just, I just turn it on. I just go, because it happens never. Yeah, we all know the classic story here i watched one show well actually it's a new show now because i don't have cable anymore so i can't watch law and order so i've been watching a lot of psych it's not really a new show i watch a lot of psych now um psych the brand new show that ended in like 2015 i mean new for me in terms of i don't watch law and order anymore it's just new (laughs) in my rotation and snl's on hiatus so you know i don't have a lot of options okay um and so when I watch a show, one, I don't watch a show unless it is finished because I never know anything that happens ever and I don't want to have to try and remember things later. And yeah, mostly that. So like I watched, what was it, Leverage? I watched that last year after I watched Only Murders. Leverage is really good. I really liked it. But I didn't realize Only Murders wasn't finished, but I heard like a lot of good things about it. And I was moving, I had moved countries and then was moving apartments while I was moving back to Slovakia. And then I had to move apartments in Slovakia. So I put only, I watch shows, I put them on in the background. So I put only murders on, just as my background packing, unpacking show. Um, but I like really got into it. I, I wasn't expecting to like it. I was just, I literally just threw it on just to have something in the background. Because like sometimes you watch YouTube videos, but then you have to like keep choosing a new one. You know what I mean? Thank you. So I like a show. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad we're on the same page here. We really are. I, I broke a rule too with watching only murders i don't usually i don't always wait for the show to be completely over but i hate stopping halfway through a season um Mm -hmm. which i know is what the streaming companies want um and i'm sorry (laughs) (laughs) but i haven't had cable in damn near a decade years yeah so I like I will uh, if a show is releasing like weekly I will wait 3 yes. months to watch it. I really however long I have to wait if I can just sit down and crank it all out I will because I don't like being left with questions unless it's a show I really like and they're like they like need the ratings, you know what I mean? Then I will mm-hmm. make an effort to like sit down and watch it properly, but like it's it's very rare I find a show that that does that. Um, but I think, I think we'll uh, we'll just start here. We'll, we'll start here with Only Murders. I think they do a really good job of, like, 
I don't even know how to explain it. And this is kind of talking about all the seasons as a whole. Each episode, I think, stands alone really well, but they also feed into each other. Like, I, I'm not left, but there were, what, three or four episodes in season three. I didn't finish it feeling like there are so many answers that they need to just get to the point. But, like, yep. there's still a good amount of 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 mystery there and I think it's very hard especially in kind of like a like a drawn out mystery like this where it's kind of one mystery for one full season mm -hmm. to sustain the suspense in the way that they do yes and I think they do a really good job I also kind of in the one mystery for a whole season I like how it's one mystery but like they keep it's like they keep hitting like dead ends in a maze in the sense that we keep finding mm -hmm. another mystery. And usually I find that annoying because I'm like, this many things can't happen to like one set of people, <laughs> realistically. But like I think they do a very good job of like of making it realistic in the sense where they have a bunch of mysteries, little mysteries to solve to get to the end goal. But it's it's realistic because it's it's like they're going in the wrong direction, you know? Because at the end of the day, they're yeah. amateurs. So it is like Maybe they made a mishap or they let their own judgments cloud, whatever. But it's not like, big mystery, big mystery, big mystery. Overarching big mystery. And it's like, it's like you can't have that many things happening. Just no, like logically. Uh, you and I both watch crime shows. And there there are some seasons where there's one like big villain throughout the, the whole season. But it mm -hmm. just feels weird because every episode is regular. Every episode is exactly the same except for five minutes where they're like oh yeah. and bad guy still exists yeah. or it's like one full episode is just and here's how bad bad guy's childhood was and they, it just feels shoehorned in a way mm -hmm. that i don't think it needs to criminal minds is really bad at that i was um, actually going to talk about i don't watch this show regularly enough to comment on it too much but i have watched it and it just popped up someone a video about it popped up the other day on my tiktok it was talking about bones because the person the video was like, her name was Ugh. Temperance Brennan, and his name was Seeley Booth, and we all just said, <laughs> okay. But, like, that show had, like, overarching villains, and it had no reason to. I have they weren't so, solving active crimes. I have so many thoughts and feelings and opinions about how Bones fumbled what could have been one of the best bags in the entire world. They, Kalina, I'm I'm gonna spoil Bones right here for a second. Okay, can I do that? Is this Wait, a safe before space you to do, do that, that? I will I will tell everyone the way I watch Bones is if it's on the TV, and Law and Order is not. But like if it's on the TV, I'll turn it on. Like it's a crime show. It kind of hits all the points I'm looking for. It's not like heavy watching. So, can, can I can I spoil Bones yes, a little course. bit? It's not really a spoil because obviously they get together at the end. But part of the reason I had to like take a very long break from watching Bones is there so temperance and Seely had this like beautiful will they won't they it lasted I, like four or five seasons of just like it was so pining just like beautiful pining tension and they were both in other relationships and like they kind of came back together but they didn't get together and this one season just ends on this beautiful shot of them finally kissing and just the buildup of these four or five seasons of just hating each other and then loving each other and then not being able to be together and then finally being able to be together and then kissing. And then the <laughs> the season finale of the next season, she's six months pregnant with his baby. And then that, okay, so I thought it was rushed to me because like I said, I'll just tune in when it's on. So sometimes they've got a kid. Sometimes they've got a kid and they're fighting. And sometimes they don't have it. And I'm just like... I know, like, I'm not watching this in order, but it feels very disjointed still. They just... It went from from their first kiss to she is half-formed a full baby. Speed run it, yeah. And it's because the actress got pregnant in real life, and, like, sure enough, you can't really tell your actress she can't get pregnant. But just make but her hold a weird handbag while the love story finishes! Oh, it just really pissed me off. Which back to only murders <laughs> <laughs> record Sorry. time for us getting off topic <laughs> um <laughs> sorry i 
sp speaking about like the specific continuity of it, I really liked how the first two seasons kind of fed into each other. Yes. I think I think it, it was done in a very clever way that like you don't see a lot in current TV. Um like Euphoria especially. Not to praise the streaming services, okay? But like Hulu popped off with this one. Hulu did pop off with this one. Like And I also beautiful. I liked it because part of the reason I was interested is I was I was a Selena Gomez girl in my Disney really? era. Yeah, Selena Gomez was like my I was like not a Miley Cyrus or Demi Lovato. Were Selena you a, like me. a Selena Gomez girl or a Selena Gomez in the scene girl? Selena Gomez girl. Oh, okay. I think Selena I mean, Gomez in the scene You can't always was like, get everything you want. No. And, like, I liked the scene, but, like, I wasn't, like... That was my, um... <laughs> that's probably my, like, getting into emo music era, so we won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was a Selena Gomez girl, so, like, I was excited to see she was acting again, because this is controversial. No offense to Selena Gomez. I think her acting's better than her music. It's kind of a hit or miss for me, you know what I mean? Yeah. I've heard snippets of her new song though and it sounds really good it's nice it just I don't know it sounds very generic pop-y which like I can't blame her for it's just not necessarily my favorite taste but like I did I, I listened to it and I liked it well enough um so I just thought it was interesting because I was glad she was back in acting I, I like know she did a couple projects she did um she did a movie and I knew she was like producing on this and stuff and very heavily involved and then, like, to pair her with Steve Martin and Martin Short, I was like, this could go, like, disastrously bad. I was expecting to not like this at all. Yeah, like, I didn't think it would be as good as it is. And so I think they they very much, instead of trying to make them all buddy-buddy, I think they very much played into the fact that, like, these are very different demographics and very different genres these people are coming from in the characters they wrote for them. And I think it's well, because, like, for the most part, Selena Gomez plays Mabel. And, like, especially when she first meets them, she's like, I don't, like, I don't get you two guys. <laughs> We're from very different periods. I don't particularly like you sometimes. And even the two old guys, Steve Martin and Martin Short, don't get along for a variety of reasons. So I think they, like, fleshed them out as characters that played very, without, like, typecasting, I suppose, that played very well into, like, who they were as actors mm -hmm. and, like, their repertoire. I, like, I hadn't seen Selena Gomez act since Wizards, um, and I'm sure some things have gone down since then, just in the Maybe. world, generally, <laughs> but I, I liked Wizards, and she, I, one thing I appreciate about Only Murders is, um, all the three characters, they don't really know each other, but they all live in the same, like, snazzy building in New York, mm -hmm. and... Martin Short and Steve Martin, whose names I don't know. Well, it's easy. Show. Martin Short is the short one. Oh, well, um, well, one of I them's don't... Oliver. Oh yeah, Oliver Putnam is, is Martin Charles, Short. Charles, I think. Mm hmm. I only know I him think. as Brazos. I was gonna say we call him Brazos. Um. Yes, he's Charles Hayden Savage. I have the Wikipedia page pulled up. Don't worry. Oh, Charles Hayden. That's funny. Um, for a different reason, I'll, I'll tell you about later. Um, <laughs> uh, so the, the two old guys are like established, one's an actor and one's a playwright. They're both kind of, they were established at one point and then they got very quickly unestablished, but like, yes. like it's us. understandable why they'd have. <laughs> <laughs> we're the two old fellas in this show. I'd like everyone to know because. <laughs> You would think they would get along, so you think we'd be the, we'd be Mabel and one of them? No, we're no. the two old guys, because, like, we're ridiculously the same, but they argue the entire time, and yep. they don't agree on how the other person does anything ever. Anything at all. But also, they're best friends, sort of. They're best friends! Um, Sorry. Where was I? Oh, yeah. So, they're, like, it's understandable that they would have enough money to live in this fancy place, um, and they have, like, lore that ties them to this place or whatever. And I was really worried that they would make Mabel some, like, influencer or just mm -hmm. do a friends and just never, ever explain it. But they they didn't, they didn't gave a good reason for why she was able to live in this fancy-dancy building while being 30 with seemingly no job. I was going to say, I appreciated that they, like, gave justifications for why everyone 
in mm-hmm. and not just them, but like everyone in the story was in the place they were at at the time. And I talked about locker room mysteries when I talked about Bullet Train. I like a locker room mystery, and to me, this is kind of the same because they're talking about murders that take place in the building. So, mm-hmm. in the sense that like all, everything they're working with is within the building for the most part. Like sometimes, you know, they go out to investigate, but like everything that's important and significant and drives the story takes place within. So you get to see these little pockets of people's lives who all come from different walks of life and different backgrounds and how they all ended up in this one place and all kind of had a role in some way, shape or form in the murder or whatever they're investigating at the time. Yeah. And I like that between the two seasons, the, like the cast doesn't, change a huge amount but it's not we're not like replaying the same events you know no yeah because that's the problem i think with keeping someplace in the same setting is you're going to encounter the same people but they manage to keep it fresh Mm -hmm. without them straying too far from the building either yeah i was also very very confused about why the title was the title so i'm very glad they knocked that out in the first episode yeah, it's weird, and then, yeah, they get, I, I like that they, they don't leave you, I think, waiting too long. Like, obviously there's a mystery, but it's never like things are hanging in the air for a long time, or like, like, they don't leave anything big hanging. Yeah. Besides the big, uh, who killed it, yeah. who done it. No, I, agree, and I think, I think they also do a really good job of, like, every single loose end is tied up and the only loose ends that aren't tied up are like carried over Mm -hmm. so for the most part you're not just left staring at the screen thinking well what happened to the ten thousand dollars worth of drugs that that was stolen by that one (laughs) weird girl you know like yeah and then also they do this a lot and like i think at some point maybe we'll get to the plot of this but they do this a lot where, like, especially in the first season, because what happens, I just watched the third season, and I was rewatching a little bit of the first just to get some context. And when they're, like, getting to know each other, they kind of, like, the camera angles and stuff imply that one ca- Mabel is hiding something in one scene, especially that first season. Mm-hmm. But I like that they don't leave that to wrap up everything at the end. It's usually, like, right away we'll get, like, a three months earlier, two years earlier sort of flashback, or we'll get a little hint of why she is the way she is. And so we as the audience, because I think sometimes they'll, they'll like hint at something, but won't give you justification. So you as the audience are also upset because you don't know what's going on. Whereas I think we as the audience like supported Mabel and understood why she was doing the things she was doing. And it kind of, we were kind of, I guess, rooting for her to come to like, to tell the truth to Charles and Oliver and like come clean because like we understood, you know, but yeah, yes. I agree. They give they give us enough information to to keep going and to not care as much that sometimes she's being a little weird. <laughs> and also, like, it, it, they give us information where we understand her as a character better, but it doesn't, like, it still ha- leaves us with questions mm-hmm. in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't, like, spoil the mystery for you, but you're like, okay, like, I kind of see, like, why she, it's motivating her to do this. I just don't know what the end result's going to be still. Yeah, they, I think they, they give us, like, half of the information, which is, mm-hmm. but they give us, like, a, a good half. Yes. And I also think, like, every single character is, like, like, of the three main ones, I like that they're all, like, I don't know, they're all fairly similar, on, like, when you look at it from the, from the big point of view, mm-hmm. but each way that they're different I think is delved into enough to make them different because there are a lot of shows where like every single character could be the exact same you know like and this I also think it like you don't have to suspend your belief too much to understand why they connected because they're basically what happened in the first episode is they're all trying to listen to an episode of their favorite podcast that's called something Um, Um, it's not okay in Oklahoma Oh, yes. All is not okay in Oklahoma. Yeah. By, hosted by the lady that Tina Fey plays. Her name begins with yep. a C. Mm-hmm. Um, Cassinda or something like that. Something like that. Something. Um, Tina Fey. <laughs> yeah, Tina Fey. And they all get cut off because the fire alarm goes off and they all have to evacuate the building. And they all end up across the street at this diner or restaurant. 
and they like realized that each other who they all met earlier in the, in the elevator were all kind of annoyed with each other they all met they all see each other at the restaurant realize they're all listening to the same podcast and they listen to it together and find out about their mystery so i think it does a good job of like connecting them mm -hmm. in like a very believable way because it's like these people you live in a building with and then it turns out there's someone dead in the building and they're like let's investigate and i think you have to suspend your belief a little bit just because if i listen to a murder podcast i don't think my first instinct if i met other people who listen to the murder podcast be like let's go look at the dead body in our apartment building so like i think you just have to suspend your belief a pinch just because it's not not realistic it's just not the most logical step but yeah back to them setting up things very well i think it it makes sense why they're deciding to work together even though they like just met each other they're kind of this uneasy beginning stages of friendship i i feel like i i really liked how they did that because they were in the the podcast that they were all listening to they kind of cut off at very big points and they were all like little bitty clues that were like it sounded like kind of just about to all be tied up in yeah. the podcast and so they were kind of talking and for the most part agreeing on on where all like where all the tiny little puddles, puzzle pieces fit in to complete the picture mm -hmm. and they were pulling out like similar little tiny things with the current murder because yeah. what happened was they were all on the elevator together with the guy who ended up dead and then he left and then he died and people were like, it's a suicide. And the, the three of them were like, no, it's not because this happened and this happened. And da, 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 da. So I thought like they, they mirrored it really well in a way that made it a lot more believable to me, mm -hmm. um, which I appreciated. I also appreciated that Tina Fey was there. Just, just, gen sure just generally. Um, I just felt the need to tell you that. <laughs> you didn't have to, I guess, but thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and yeah, so this guy gets murdered, and then some stuff happens. We find out, we figure out Mabel knows him, or knew him, and is kind of linked to an earlier murder that took place in the building. Because she had, like, this little group of friends, and I think one of them what, fell off or got pushed off of the roof at some party. She was pushed off of the roof. She was pushed yes. off of the roof. And there's, like, an air of mystery around who really did it, but her boyfriend went away for it. Went away for it. Totally unrelated. Her boyfriend? So cute. So fine. Oh, so cute. the game Mabel has. Like, I've seen Selena Gomez. I get it. But, the but it's still so impressive. I mean, she's got that pretty boy from season one. You got Cara Delevingne. She's got that pretty boy in season three who is probably gonna be weird. Um, but... Oh my goodness. It's like... I don't know. Totally unrelated. Anyway, so like he gets put away for this murder because he's dating the girl that gets pushed off. It turns out the two of them and Mabel and this guy, the guy that got killed in the present day in season one, all big group of friends. So we're kind of solving two mysteries at once, even though Charles and Oliver, the old guys, don't realize it. But it's kind of helping Mabel, which I liked, because again as the audience we're like putting pieces together but now we have another mystery to solve but it doesn't feel unnatural it's kind of like well what happened because also it's bits it's like mabel's memory and it seems like something she doesn't want to confront so it doesn't seem like we're not getting the information because they want to keep the air but it's more like it's something mabel's not quite ready to process so we're only getting these clips that she's willing to go through yeah and i think they did that well and i also think kind of the feeding us the information about Mabel being friends with the, the first murder victim mm -hmm. kind of retroactively helped us understand why she, why she was so on board to yep. solve it in the first place. Which again, just Yeah, like in retrospect, like, you're like, oh, she's playing it really cool. Yeah. Also, I'm so sorry. I think we should have given him a cooler name than Tim. But that's just me. Oh, he was dead. He's gonna die anyway. Like, I like Oscar. the other guy's name, Oscar. I thought they had some, Oscar. Had some weight to it. Yeah, Oscar's, I think it's a, it's a good name. Anyway, that's season one. Oh, it's Cinda. Sorry, it's Cinda, Cinda. Kinnan is the lady's name. I like Tina Fey better. Um, yeah. Do you want to recap season two, and then I'll, we can recap season three, and then we can chit-chat about all our, our little fun little thoughts, because otherwise we're never going to get to them. Yeah, <laughs> so season two... 
The only thing I remember is Amy Schumer was there. Amy Schumer was there. Tina Fey was there. I remember, like, where it ended up, but I don't remember where we started. And the detective was present and was pregnant at some point. Or her wife was pregnant. Who was the main dead guy? The main dead guy was was one of the... Wasn't it like there was an old lady who had a painting... And yes, 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 yes. It was um it was the the building manager was the one who died. Um so in the first season, or the first episode, well it was in the 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 la- the finale was of the that, first season yeah. and the start of the second oh, also, season. Oh, also, sorry. What I like is that's the first thing we get in the first episode of the first season. So I like how they set it up for season 2 already is we get this scene of them running out the building like we can't leave her so they go to go check on mabel mabel standing over a dead body covered in blood mm-hmm. which then rolls into both the last thing we see in season one and the first thing we see in season two yeah they 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 left us with food on our plates but then they immediately gave us a spoon and a fork you know like mm-hmm. they so yeah the building manager <laughs> dies um and Mabel is the one who either kills her or finds her body. We don't know. There's blood on everybody. It's kind of hot. Um, <laughs> no, no finish. Sorry. I, I didn't say anything. <laughs> and that's the, the main who who done it is who killed this nice old lady who had some generic old lady name. Um, also, but it I kind of her nice. Her name was Bunny. Her name was Bunny and she was not nice, but... She was okay. Anyway, turns out <laughs> throughout the it pulls out different mysteries. So some of the like spokes on this wheel are there was a new building manager coming in, um, who was like backed by a like a big company who wanted mm-hmm. to completely modernize and, and really just mess with the building and fire some of the staff and all of that. And then the the people in the building themselves were all acting fishy because like Kalina said, she was not a nice lady. Everybody had her, their own issue with her. And then one of the other spokes, which is similar to the whatever, um, is that like Mabel had been publicly actively mean to her and then wound up dead in front of her. But then there was this like fork. It wasn't necessarily a spoke. It was more of a fork where the podcast lady is getting unnecessarily intertwined with everything. Mm-hmm. And then the podcast lady's podcast lady, assistant, is the re- regular word. <laughs> like, she's meddling, and a cop is involved somehow. A boy cop is involved, but then also there's a girl cop who's involved on the good side. A whole lot happens. There's but a painting that goes missing. There's a painting that goes missing, and a girl who pretends to be the person in the painting... Um, which ha- involves Mr. Hayden Charles because his dad is assumed to also be in the painting. And so he's like, oh my gosh, who's this lady that has not my mother. sex with my dad? <laughs> <laughs> so many things happened in that season. I like blocked it out. First of all, I was watching season one and I was like, I don't remember any of these things happening. And then like, as we got on, I was like, okay. But I think I blocked season two out. I think it kind of falls into the... And it was good. But, like, now that I'm watching season three, it kind of falls into, like, the second part is always the worst, unfortunately. <laughs> just by comparison. Um, and also, I was... Amy Schumer, Amy Schumer was in it, so I was kind of pretending she wasn't. Uh, Amy Schumer was in it, but also there was a girl who looked like a goth librarian, which really boosted my personal ratings of the season. I know it probably didn't help with you, but and like, when I was watching it, there help. was a lot of stuff coming out about Cara Delevingne. So I tweeted, I was like, "I'm pretending Cara Delevingne and Amy Schumer cancel each other out, so I can enjoy season two in peace." I don't think I'd ever seen Cara Delevingne act in things except for um, the Bad Blood music video, which I don't think counts. <laughs> <laughs> she was better than I thought she would. Cara Delevingne is um, an art like a just an artist who owns a collective in new york city which is the most annoying sentence i don't remember her name her name's cara Delevingne. in the show not cara yes, Delevingne. sorry yeah in the, the show yeah. cara Delevingne, the person is a model i think so and an most actress times. allegedly and yeah she was in that john green movie with that with that wolf <gasps> boy yeah she was in uh was it looking for alaska is that what it yes. was no yeah i think so 
The one where she disappears and he goes to find her because he thinks she left him clues and she's like, nah, I didn't. Yeah, I believe, I believe so. No, it's, um, Paper Towns. Or Paper... Paper Towns. Paper Paper Towns. Towns. Looking for Alaska is the one where that's school or something. I think, I don't know if Looking for Alaska ever actually made it into a movie. I I don't think so. Yeah. No, you're right. It's Paper Towns. I did John Green phase. I, that's kind of embarrassing for me to admit and also that I had such a big John Green phase and can't even remember the name of things. Moving back on. Season um, two. She gets embroiled, Cara Delevingne's character gets embroiled in it because she reaches out to Mabel and is like, oh my god, I love you. We, You should put your art in our collective. Also, Selena Gomez is a, it, Mabel is a painter, which only happens sometimes and seems to have been forgotten by season three, but she's a painter. And... Cara Delevingne is like... Yeah, did, like, did her weird. aunt... Like, the reason she's in the apartment is her aunt hired her to, like, renovate it. And Which, like, she does, like, I these little portraits. I would trust a 30-year-old mm. painter to... I would trust her to paint my walls. I would trust her to do a nice little mural. Um, what she did? Renovate an entire apartment. <laughs> I feel like they're not the same skill set. Yeah. Anyway, season two. She gets embroiled... This one was confusing and not in a bad way. It was just like everyone was like trying to get in, but it made sense because in the first season they're doing the podcast, the podcast kind of blows up and they get these like very loyal fan base of followers, which now that I'm thinking about, there's a lot of characters that were in these first two seasons that just like booted out the quick picture in the third season. But um, there's still time. They get this, true. They get this loyal like fan base because they're like posting as they're investigating and so, like, they've gained some notoriety. So when at the end of the last season, first season, Mabel is arrested because she's found over this dead woman's body and covered in blood, they're like, obviously she did it. And there's, like, a ha- trending hashtag, Bloody Mabel. So, like, there's a lot of, like, a lot of, like, notoriety around them. And they're still just trying to go back to the three people who like a podcast and just wanted to solve a mystery together. So they're still trying to, like, hold on to the essence of that. But the stakes are much higher Mm-hmm. But not because they want them to be, which I liked. I thought that was realistic in the sense that they were like, we weren't like we weren't trying to make a podcast and be famous. We were just three people who like live in the same building. That, literally, that's it. We just happen yeah. to live in the same building, happen to listen to the same podcast. And one thing in season two is I think every single person was a suspect at one time, mm-hmm. uh, but it was it didn't feel like they were grasping at straws to me it no. seems like every single person did something a little shady and they displayed it in a very good way like i remember there was one i don't remember where the information came from but they the three main buddies were talking and it was like the murderer has to be someone who like is is new and is trying to insert themselves unnecessarily in things which fit the bill for Cara Delevingne. It fit the bill for that daughter that Steve Martin apparently has. It fit the bill for a bunch of people in the building. It like it mm-hmm. was. It was, and I vague. like that because. Know. Sorry, it's just like especially because we're talking about the people living in the building. Is you're bound to step on people's toes when you're living in an apartment complex together. So like, yeah, you've got a couple of characters who come in kind of because of the fame. So like, they're suspicious because they just came out of nowhere. And now they went like Cara Delevingne. She's like came out of nowhere. And now she's like, you should post your art, and I want to be your girlfriend, like, all these things. And then you have all these people in the building, like, obviously you're going to get on each other's nerves. Mm -hmm. You're going to do something petty to each other at some point in time. But, like, none of that looks good when you're looking back at it in retrospect through the light of a murder. And you're like, well, maybe you went a little bit deeper than that for some people. Yeah. I, it, it seemed, it was intent, like, I don't know, it, it, it all felt very intentional. It wasn't just, oh, we're on the fifth episode and now somebody else has to have the spotlight on them yep yeah which is good i like i like that it's kind of stuck in the building too because it it kind of constrains it in a way that i think crime shows need to be constrained it's a locked room mystery yeah yeah exactly look at us knowing terms i actually don't know that term i'm pretty sure it is maybe locked box it's like locked room or something like that. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, that's what I like. That's what I was talking about. Bullet train was like, they were all on a train, obviously. I mm-hmm. liked it. But I like when there's some outside, outside influence. So like, not necessarily they can get off the train, but like, they could, but like, everything that happens and all the plot progression takes place in this confined space mm-hmm. that they can't leave. It's good. It's also 
I really like how in the second season the building almost becomes a character. Yes. Which is you know, good. It's got this history and it's got so many so many personalities in it that it kind of takes on its own. Mm-hmm. And I... But everyone experiences differently. I'm just gonna say it. And maybe this is a controversial opinion. Okay? I love a tunnel. <laughs> love a secret passageway. Love a tunnel. I did like that. Yeah, in this season they have these like, secret passageways and they're spying on people in their rooms. Um, but anyway, the wrap-up of season two is it turns out Cinda, Tina Fey's character, who owns this very popular podcast, her assistant was trying to like, was tired of like being walked all over by her, was trying to like make her own name with her own podcast. So was trying to frame, you know, Mabel for murder. And she was dating this cop who like did some shady things to kind of help Cinda get inside information. Blah, 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 blah. They closed the case. They all like seem to be going their separate ways. Oliver is like reconciling with his son. Charles gets like, he gets back on this, like, a TV show reboot of his mm-hmm. show. Um, oh, Oliver, sorry. Oliver is making a Broadway play, okay? He's gotten approved. He's Got gotten the back funding. on Broadway. Um, and then his actor dies. His actor, Paul Rudd. Love that guy. Paul Rudd, which we just the need to take are. a moment here. He is so ridiculously fine that I'm I, upset that he's the one who got murdered. I'm upset he's so fine because he plays the love interest in Clueless and I do not think you should date your stepbrother. However, or not stepbrother, yeah, stepbrother. If your stepbrother happens to be Paul Rudd... No, I don't, please don't finish <laughs> that sentence. I, nope. Like, it's one of those things where you're like, it's legal, but should it be? No. And he's like a lot older. Not a lot older than him. He's like a bit older than her. This is the plot of Clueless? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a remake of some Shakespeare play, I think. I could be wrong on that. That's the plot. Well, that's not the plot of Clueless. That's just one of the ending things in Clueless. There's, they date, and he's her stepbrother. I really... I, I don't know why I'm acting surprised. Until about 30 seconds ago, I just thought the plot of Clueless was that she wore a cute plaid skirt. Uh, and then that's <laughs> the movie where they have the, they have the line, you're a virgin who can't drive. Okay. You never heard that? Oh my god. And Brittany Murphy's in it and she's dead now. And then my <laughs> one of my favorite cops from Law & Order is in it and he's so cute. And then the guy from Scrubs is in it. Which guy from Scrubs? The main uh, guy? Turk. Okay. So, yes. He's cute. He's cute. What's his name? Donald something. Something. Donald something. Oh, You've never seen Clueless? Also. No, I've never. It's a Paul Rudd classic. It's because Paul Rudd is in it. Well, I. I don't even know what Oh, I'm sorry. Paul it's not Rudd based in. on Shakespeare. It is loosely based on Jane Austen's novel, Emma. Do you know who is in the Emma? The Emma got remade, I think, 2020 or 2019, because I watched it during lockdown. Emma has one of the finest men alive in it. I don't know his name. He's just a pretty blonde one with the lips. Um, and I... Heinous things. Just heinous thoughts Biblical. occur. Like... Like, I would need to be euthanized. Okay? Anyway, season three. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, we, we have to go back to season two. Season two was not... Season co- two. What, my favorite part of season two was not was not talked about enough because... Apologies. Uh, We've met us. Because I didn't talk about it. Um, so, Cinda's assistant, uh, it turns out, became her assistant by literally just walking in and saying, give me a job. Um, but it ties back to season one in yes. that the assistant is actually the murder victim from the, it's not, oh, or it's not okay. All is not okay. In All Oklahoma. is not okay in Oklahoma. So that's how, cause she came to Cinda and she goes, I want a job. And Cinda's like, 
Meh. And then she's like, but I have a mystery. And so she that's how able she was able to like crazy. get in. I thought that was crazy. I thought it was done really well because it was a twist and it was not a twist that you would ever expect, but it was a twist that was done really well. Because, I mean, yeah, I was going to say, that's another one of those where it's like that you'd have to suspend your belief for, but they th- I, they set it up so well that it really wasn't too far of a stretch. Mm-hmm. Was just, they had to pull something out of the bag, you know? Yeah, they did, but I think they, they pulled it well and they kind of set it up well. And it wasn't really like, um, I'm not going to name names here, Marvel, where there's a... <laughs> where there's a twist just because there has to be a twist there's a twist because you know how these movies usually end and so now they have to do something new and different because just to do something new and different it was like it it was intentional and you can tell that like it wasn't just pulled out halfway through you know i was gonna say it it and like somehow that wasn't the biggest like issue they were tackling Mm -hmm. it's like it like fed in very well because it kind of linked to all these other little twists that we were figuring out like why charles's father is in the painting who really did the painting um what were like cara delavine's real motives and like why was she inviting mabel to be in her art show like things like that so like it was all these little pieces were coming together without them one necessarily feeling bigger than the other even though they all had different weights obviously Mm -hmm. But I think kind of like, like sorry. Okay. I think season one and season two were so like perfectly interlocked and they all fed into each other that it made I'm like worried about season three. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad I'm not alone in that. Well, what I was gonna say was they did the same thing they didn't. So season one starts with Mabel standing over this dead body. Season one ends with we figure out how she got to that point. Season two starts with, she's over the dead body, she's getting arrested for the dead body, blah blah blah, we solve this mystery. Season two ends, Oliver's star, Paul Rudd, dies on stage in the middle of their Broadway play. Season three opens, Oliver's star, so like, I like how they connected it and like mm-hmm. took you back, but not just like, in like a season recap to start the season, but like throughout the season and throughout the episodes, they take you back to the previous seasons to prove everything. Um, and... I liked season three. Now that I'm thinking about it, like I said, a lot of characters who were in it before didn't, like, aren't in it now. Like, we're still in the building, but we're not really seeing the characters because we're in the building unless we brought in this new cast from the Broadway play. So they come into the building, but we're not really circling around the same people, which is nice. But yes, now I'm a little worried because of how well they connected season one and season two. I'm really... I want to know if they're, like, going in a completely different direction, which is fine. I just want to see how they're going to do it. Are they going to tie back in the original... Not even characters, but just the original ambiance like and like yeah. personality of the building. Yeah, premise. Back into season three because I think that's what where the strong suit is versus... Like we said, they're not introducing new characters all the time. They're not introducing these ridiculous plot points. Like, it is very contained. Yeah, I think it's it's also interesting that some of the new characters... So, um, Steve Martin, Hayden, Hayden Charles... Charles... Charles. Charles Hayden. Whatever. Savage. Whoever. Savage. Brazos. Mr. Savage. Brazos. <laughs> that guy. Um, one of the new characters who was mentioned a little bit in, definitely in season two, I don't think in season one, but mm-hmm. she's actually moved, they, they started dating and they, she actually moved into the building, mm-hmm. which I think was a, was a cute little point. Um, yeah, I'm so, also, like, they're fleshing out some characters we've run into. Like, they're another one that we've seen a couple, at least in the beginning, the first two episodes. Because we're here. To be fair, there's only four episodes out for season three. But one character we saw, I think, in the first two episodes of season three. If not, it was definitely the first one. Was their neighbor who, like, kind of thinks they're dumb. I don't know who she's played by. But, like, one of the older ladies mm-hmm. um, who, like, I think she comes along when they find the dead body. Basically, what happens in season three, um, Paul Rudd collapses on stage. He's taken to the hospital. He's dead. This is a disaster because it's opening out of Oliver the Broadway show. He shows up to the opening party because Oliver still decides to throw it. Just everyone has some place to go. He, Paul Rudd, bursts into the room. He said, I was dead for like an hour, which the hospital said was a record, but he's not actually dead. Then Mabel and Oliver and Charles are in the elevator in the building and blood is, and they're like, they say something along the lines of like, oh, we can't do a podcast because they're going to do a podcast about him getting about Paul Rudd being posed poisoned at the opening of his Broadway debut 
And then Charles is like, oh, well, we can, you know, he's alive, so we couldn't do it anyway. Like, the murder didn't happen in the building, which was the whole premise of their podcast. So he's like, so we can't Only do it. Only murders in the building. <laughs> yeah. But then something starts dripping on Charles, and they all look up, and they're like, that's not great. So they run out the elevator, and guess whose dead body collapses from the ceiling of the elevator? Eleanor. Paul Rudd. Oh my god, good job. You get a gold star. Thank you. So, the murder took place in the building. And Mabel is kind of feeling left out because Charles has his, like, new girlfriend moving in. Oliver's consumed with his Broadway play. She's kind of feeling like they're not really, like, the dynamic... That's not... The trio. terrific trio that they used to be. <laughs> Um, and so she's like trying to get the podcast going so like they'll spend time together she's feeling very lonely she's got to move out of the apartment soon and so she's going to like spearheading this investigation herself and again I like that they give reasons for why she's doing that before it made sense because she was friends with the guy whereas in the second season I felt like Charles really took charge because of this painting so I would like to see Charles is in charge Charles is in charge (laughs) and then (laughs) With this one, I think Oliver is taking charge in the sense that it's his Broadway play, but, like, the kind of initial push came from Mabel because she's feeling kind of lonely and left out. And mm-hmm. she's like, I don't know, my two, my only two friends are old dudes, but, like, I gotta <laughs> hang on to them. So where we're at right now is, like, he gets, um, Paul Rudd gets murdered. The police arrest this one guy, but um, Charles and Mabel agree, like, it's not him. And they, like, have a suspect, but she just got cleared up as, like, this... Um, the leading lady, not the leading lady, but one of the young, the young girl in the Broadway cast, they thought was dating Charles, and, like, he scorned her, but it turns out, like, that wasn't really what's going on, so they just cleared up, so we've just, like, cleared up our last suspect, so we're kind of, right now, at this fourth episode, we're at a point where we're, we don't have any suspects, I don't think. Um, we, uh, we don't have any, like, confirmed suspects, we have two or three people who are still acting kind of weird, and some other people that are definitely gonna start acting weird soon. Yeah, so it's like, there's like, we know there's other things going on, but in terms of like the straight up murder, we're not really sure who we're looking at anymore, but we have, we we do get the feeling that like, there's other things we're going to have to figure out. Mm -hmm. Also, I think this show overall does a really good job of like, it has these moments that are very clearly supposed to be funny and like take you out of the story. And like, sometimes I find that's annoying because I think they play it just to play it up. Whereas here, I don't think so. Like, I think it makes sense. And the people have very like natural reactions. Mm -hmm. And then also, before I forget this point. I don't know if this is the right terminology, but I feel like there's, like, a bit of magical realism, especially in the first season. Like, there's a scene where Oliver goes to visit his son, and he's leaving, and he, like, falls off the porch and, like, bounces off the grass like it's a trampoline. Because that's what's happening in his head, or in this later season, he, um, his show's falling apart, and he has a dream where Charles and Mabel and one other guy, I don't remember who, are, like, singing a song about how he needs to give up. And does he learn his lesson? No, he wakes up and he's like, oh my god, I'm gonna do a musical. Or Charles keeps acting and he keeps going to what they call the actor's white room, which is he just blanks out because he's like doing so badly. So to protect himself, he just blacks out and goes into this room that's all white and just kind of lives there for a little while. So I think they do moments like that well. And I think I like how they give you character studies and frame it around the podcast um, because every episode has like a little intro that's narrated by a different character and it's usually the character you're going to get more info on that episode but it kind of sounds like they're talking to you like they're setting up the story of a podcast i really like how they like link it back into what the premise of the show is i was like stupid excited when i realized that this show was about a podcast i didn't know that before i started it was was a little (laughs) yeah me neither and i I watched it and i was like this is a little embarrassing for us oh i like to think we like people who do a podcast but like we do it differently which i'm sure that's what everyone says and that that is what everybody says um but unfortunately i am a little bit annoying about it i do think everybody at work knows that i have a podcast um they also know you have a wife so they also know i have a wife which is i could <laughs> do be they know you do the podcast th- with your wife oh yes it is inextricably linked so sorry only murders in the building um yes totally related oh. no one in that show has a wife i have we come to the point of the episode where we can just talk about can we just pull out random things now because i've got yeah, a couple yeah, go random things we, okay. we've recapped the plot don't worry about it the whole thing of martin short's opening night for so his last opening night went absolutely a business <laughs> okay and I listen, way- that was so so ridiculous it was hilarious 
the way they explain it is that it was some sort of water based no no musical. i will tell you the show is and- called splash okay <laughs> <laughs> so the top, so like what usually would be like the rafter area of the stage was supposed to represent a pier, okay? So the stage itself, they built a pool in it, and the stage was supposed to like lower so that they could fall into the pool. However, the opening day of the show Splash, the hydraulics were not working, and Oliver Martin Short's character was like, "Just go ahead." So all these poor men are jumping off of <laughs> they're jumping off of this pier. That is miles high, not miles high, but it's up there in the rafters of the stage, flat onto a hard theater stage because there's no pool because it did not move out the way. <laughs> and he goes, when he's explaining this, he goes, I can still hear the sound of their bodies. In the <laughs> and there were like 10 of them and they just kept going. He said, the choir so... boys usually stick together. <laughs> and then they gave him another show. <laughs> And they they made that be a very emotionally heavy reveal. And oh Mm -hmm. my god. Yeah, who... He should be not allowed. Banned. Also, Meryl Streep is in the third season? I was gonna say, I think, like, you can tell this is a good show and it's got promise because of the people they get. Like, Martin Short and, and Steve Martin, obviously, like, were in on the creation of it, I think, in some way. Or, like, you know, in the beginning stages. So, like, that makes sense. But, like, even though, we, like, Sting was in the first season, he had a couple of guest cameos. Um, Not that I think they're, like, highly respected actors or anything, but, like, Cara Delevingne and Amy Schumer, like, names you recognize, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, um, Amy Schumer is my favorite actress, actually. I'm gonna clip you saying that. Please and don't. No context. <laughs> um, who else was in it? Like you get cameos from like, like funny people. Yeah, but like Meryl Streep in it now. Tina Fey, yes. Um, and then, well, talking about little things we like. I was because I was oh, watching the first sorry. season. Sorry, that wasn't my point about bringing up Meryl Streep. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry. But... So, sorry. Just a real quick tidbit. Um, part of Meryl Streep's thing, she's in the play that Martin Short is putting on, mm-hmm. and she is a good actress most of the time, but she also gets very nervous and starts acting very badly, and I think it takes a really good actress to act poorly so Stop well. living in my brain, because I was like, <laughs> she's playing an actress, right? Who, like, has to deliver this performance convincingly. So does she deliver the por- performance how she... Meryl Streep would deliver the performance? Does she have to, like, deliver the performance as Loretta, that's her character, delivering this performance well, and then delivering it back? Do you that live one, in my brain? So, there's this ballet, the Cinderella Ballet, um, that I went to see a couple years ago, put on by at Ballet Arizona, and um, it was... The, the two stepsisters are bad people. We've all seen Cinderella. But they have to the ballerinas in the ballet have to dance poorly but you can just tell when they're on stage that they have such a good like command of ballet that they're able to to dance poorly and it's just like Mm -hmm. a very weird and very impressive cycle this is somewhat related Like, sometimes we'll do, uh, I play water polo, and sometimes we'll do, like, fun games where, like, we'll invite, like, a baseball team or, like, someone who doesn't, like, you know, athletic people or, like, you know, non-athletic people who don't play water polo to have, like, a fun little game with them. And, like, I hate it because it's so hard to, like, play poorly well. Especially as a goalkeeper, I'm like, I'm supposed to be letting these in, but, like, I gotta make it look like I'm trying to get them. But, like, me trying to get the ball from a person who doesn't know how to put the ball in the goal is very easy. So, like, it's very hard to, like, fake the funk. Mm -hmm. You have to be good enough to be able to be bad at it. Yeah. Well, I forgot my point. What was my point? I'm sorry. Martin Short and his son. Um, Oliver has, like, in the first season, got this estranged. Is so fine. He's got this estranged relationship with his son. But I really liked one thing is in the first season when he talks to him, he calls him honey a lot, which I thought was sweet. And I just like that that is... They don't just leave it, oh, he's got a bad relationship with his son. That's normal for a dad, you know? Like, they they do make him work on it. They do make it a point to kind of 
almost hinders his ability to investigate because at the end of the day that's not their job they are real people he needs to work on his relationship with his son and it becomes like a very integral part of his his character and his character development I don't think Eleanor can hear me. <laughs> so I'll just go off the rails here. I also really like Mabel's outfits. I think the costuming for her is very nice. And I like that they give them realistic problems for people their age. Whereas the sense that Oliver, he's got this, this very strained relationship with his adult son. Charles has like this strained relationship with the daughter of this woman he dated for a really long time. Where he kind of feels like her dad, but like he doesn't really know if that's his place anymore. And kind of also, in the later season, entering into a new relationship. And then Mabel's kind of struggling with her time renovating her aunt's partner. Her aunt's apartment has come to an end. She's kind of gone through these couple of relationships that ended not in, like, the best. They weren't badly, but, like, they didn't end in the best way. And she's kind of struggling with being in her 30s and not really having a career or, like, a partner or, like, a stable job or life or anything like that. I do like that. I think they wrote them very well. And they wrote them as fully fleshed out characters. Because sometimes, especially, like, even though they're all main characters, sometimes they might flesh out one aspect, like, let's say the character's familiar relationship. You might flesh out one character's familiar relationship, but not the others. Whereas all of them, we've gotten some background to their parents. We've gotten some background mm-hmm. into their past romantic relationships. We've gotten some background into, you know, how they got their interests and hobbies and how they got into the building in the first place. I And I think it's also, they do it very evenly like throughout this season like we didn't leave season one knowing a whole host more about Ma- like yeah. we went a little bit more into mabel just because of the how the storyline went on but it's not like we knew a million things about her and only 50 things about everybody else like it was it was lopsided in a way that made sense but not in a way that felt like a hindrance to the story and, and also, also when we get when right, things are revealed are so to pretty. us they're so cute I because i was watching again season one she's got this like bright yellow one but um also when we get when things are revealed to us it's called it's usually in turn or kind of in the same vein that it would be revealed to each other because at the end of the day they haven't been like now in season three yeah they've been established friends and i think it's not to talk about me and eleanor again but it's kind of like eleanor and i in the sense that i think we became very good friends very quickly because we were together all the time we lived together so like they live in the same building and like they make an effort to see each other and hang out and solve a mystery together so they see each other every day so like while it's only been i want to say not even three years really but it might be because there was a time jump so like let's say three years they're still very close friends but at the same time they're still learning things about each other because they have you know at at minimum with mabel 30 years worth of life to catch up on with each Mm other yeah and their friendship was kind of sent around a a goal and the friendship yeah. kind of followed that which i think is a, a natural progression oh God, that's what happened to us that's what the way to do it guys. goal the podcast the radio show i guess that's true going to class i i yeah our goal was <laughs> degree <laughs> Graduate. It, was, it was us against our house for a while there too <laughs> And then it was a me against our house, but we won't talk about that. What we're going to do is we're going to let you go, because I'm not bitter about anything ever. And I have been Eleanor. <laughs> and I can't wait to see her in two weeks. Two whole weeks. I'm so excited. Don't tell her I said that. Um, next week, we're probably going to talk about Hosier. Hosier. Mr. Andrew. My favorite Irish guy, whose name I still cannot say... I'm so excited. I've been putting off listening to this for the show. So you all are very lucky. Say thank you. Thank you. And if we don't talk about that, then we don't talk about that. Don't don't quote me on that. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Thank you. Good night. Thanks for listening. Don't quote me on that. One day we'll have an outro, but it's not today. <laughs>